Hey everyone, welcome back to OC Outdoorsman. Well, we're off till late start this morning. It's, uh, it's a little before 8 o'clock and we're just now getting on the water. We're going to head out to the bait barge. I made a few modifications to my bait tank. I'll show that to you later. So we'll see how the fish hold up today. We'll be heading north towards Salt Creek and I will be targeting the kelp forest. Last Saturday, we hit the same spot. I was here with Ryan and Quan, and Ryan caught this huge barred sand bass. And I captured everything on video. Unfortunately, during the transfer from my GoPro to the iPad, the footage was lost, which was why I didn't publish a video last weekend. Hopefully things go better today. Fishing with me today is Glenn. You can see he just picked up the live sardines from the bait barge. So I'm just gonna head over and get my half of the bait. We got a good mix today of decent sized sardines and anchovies. So we have a little bit of variety to fish with this morning. On our way out to Salt Creek, I decided to throw a few casts towards the rocks here. And I land my first fish of the morning, a barred sand bass using a hookup bait in red crab. This one was a 3 8 ounce red crab hookup bait. Here I am at the kelp forest, which is now at the southernmost edge of the strand. I've submerged my GoPro into the water to give you a better view of this kelp. Do note that the visibility isn't always as clear as you know. I, I used to do quite a bit of spearfishing and I also scuba dive and it'd be nice if the water was always this clear. At this point it's around 10.30 in the morning and low tide has just rolled in so the kelp is right there on the surface but for some reason the fishing here was really slow today I didn't land a single fish in the kelp beds I decided to move further north and fish along the beach and I managed to land this little calico bass you can see the sardine hanging out of his mouth there it's almost the same length as the calico bass himself sardine. It was really tough trying to get the hook out of his mouth. Here's another shot of my bait tank. At this point the bait's been in there for right around six and a half hours and I'm gonna dunk my camera here to give you a better look at how lively they are. As you can see the sardines did quite well and the anchovies, they're notorious for dying off, and I only lost maybe half a dozen or so. Overall, they did quite well. I'm gonna close the lid here to show you one modification I made to the bait tank. As you can see on the side there, I have mounted two rod holders. One of the advantages of using a cooler of this size is the ability to mount accessories to it. Here I'm just inside of the break wall and I'm releasing the few remaining sardines and anchovies from my bait tank. Oh, one other modification I forgot to mention earlier is that I mounted the aerators to the left side of the cooler there. I simply used Velcro for this. I avoided drilling into the cooler because I wanted it to maintain its ability to maintain the temperature of the water inside of the cooler. By the way, the second smaller aerator is just a spare that I found while going through my fishing gear the other day. 
here I'm approaching the landing point of Baby Beach and was again surprised to see just how many people were on the beach. I've never seen it this crowded. If you recall the video I took from my Memorial Day fishing trip out here, the beach was pretty crowded, but boy, today it was even worse. I forgot to drain the cooler and boy, dragging this kayak with a 15 gallon cooler full of water can get pretty heavy. We covered around nine miles of water today. Here's a screen capture from my Strava app. Well, thanks you guys for watching and please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up.